This is a telephone. Phones have numbers. Ever wondered how they worked? Before we talk about telephone numbers, we need to understand how telephones work. We need to go back before the telephone, the telegraph, the discovery of electromagnetism, and look into the definition of sound. Sounds are vibrations that travel through the air or another medium and can be heard when they reach a person's or an animal's ear. Sound is a mechanical wave. A wave is a disturbance that travels through medium, transferring energy from one location to another. However, as a sound wave travels through the medium, it will often reach the end of the medium and perhaps encounter an obstacle, encounter an obstacle, or perhaps encounter an obstacle, or perhaps find another medium through which it could travel. It is also prone to wave interference which It is also prone to wave interference It is also prone to wave interference which occurs when it interferes with another wave Because of this we cannot just communicate with people that are far away using just our human voice So how was the telephone invented Enter the era of electromagnetism. In 1820, Hans Christian Ørsted discovered that an electric current generates a magnetic field. This led to the invention of the electromagnet in 1824 by William Sturgeon. An electromagnet is a type of magnet in which the magnetic field is produced by an electric current. The magnetic field disappears when the current is turned off. Ørsted's work influenced Michael Faraday and Joseph Henry to independently discover that electric currents can be produced in wires moving in a magnetic field, also known as electromagnetic induction. The concept of electromagnet was later used to invent two independent electric telegraph systems in 1837, one by Cook and Wheatstone in Britain, and one by Samuel Morse in the US. The electric telegraph used electric signals to send coded messages. Because of its simple design, it achieved widespread commercial success. In the 1870s, young inventors were working independently on creating a harmonic telegraph. Alexander Graham Bell was famously known for creating the first telephone, a device that transmits voice using electric currents through a wire. Charles Bursel, Antonio Meucci, Johann Philippe Reis, Alexander Graham Bell, and Alicia Gray, amongst others, have all been credited with the telephone's invention. Nevertheless, after various patent lawsuits, the American Bell Telephone Company had complete control of the technology and thus began the commercialization of the telephone. Here's an example of how an early telephone worked. Early telephones were wired to and communicated with only a single other telephone. That means your phone would only be able to make a call with that one other person. And usually in the early days, that telephone would be connected to your workplace telephone. Now. Here is my telephone. Now I know it's not a early telephone. It doesn't look like one, but bear with me. So each telephone has a microphone and a receiver. And a receiver is held by a spring switch called a hook. When a person wants to make a phone call, he or she lifts the receiver which causes the hook to go up. This connects the telephone set to the telephone network and causes a current flow. This also sends a ringing signal to the other telephone to inform that there is an incoming call. When the other person does pick up the phone, the two telephones are now connected to each other. 
When a person talks to a microphone, sound vibrations move a diaphragm which is connected to a magnet. A coil translates the motions of the magnet into an electrical signal. This is called electric induction. A changing magnetic field induces an electric field. The resulting electrical signal moves through wires to a receiver of the other phone. The receiver connects an electrical signal into a moving diaphragm. The receiver connects an electrical signal into a moving diaphragm using a coil or inductor attached to the diaphragm and a permanent magnet. The changing electrical signal causes the permanent magnet to vibrate which vibrates the diaphragm and produces sound. The problem was that you could only call one other telephone. Well, that was solved thanks to the invention of the telephone exchange. All calls were made through the central office where a telephone operator connected the person initiating the call to the party that he or she wished to reach using a switchboard. By now, subscriber systems in various cities were established. People who wanted a working telephone with the ability to dial and receive telephone calls would subscribe to a payment system. Each customer would have their own jack panel. So now if I wanted to call someone, I would pick up my receiver and tell the operator who this call is for. And the operator would connect the line by plugging the jack into the appropriate panel. This seemed like a pretty good system. People were identified by their names rather than a number. And let's assume that you know, in the future, machines would eventually replace the human operators and they would be programmed in a way to remember all the panels and which panel is assigned to which subscriber. And we would still be identified by our names rather than a phone number. So how did phone number come into place? Well, in 1879, there was a measles epidemic in US. In the city of Lowell, Massachusetts, there were only four switchboard operators working at the central office at that time. Dr. Moses Parker, a local doctor, realized that if all four of the city's operators were affected by the epidemic, the replacements would have great trouble quickly learning which of the switchboard's jacks were assigned to which subscribers. He recommended the use of numbers instead. If the lines were numbered, it would be a more rational system which would be easier for replacement operators to learn rapidly. When telephone numbers were first used, they were pretty short from one to three digits and were communicated orally to a switchboard operator when making a call. By now, more cities started establishing subscriber systems. Cities became urbanized, cities grew, and cities ran out of phone numbers. So longer numbers were used, but longer numbers are harder to memorize. In the 1940s, the North American numbering plan was created in an attempt to unify all the local subscriber system into a single organized system. The NANP is a convention that assigns unique 10 digit phone numbers in most of North America. If you live in US or Canada or anywhere here, then that your phone numbers follow the NANP. The new numbering plan divided the North American continent into regional service areas called numbering plan areas, primarily based on the boundaries of states and provinces. Each NPA is identified by a three-digit number called the area code. That's the first three digits of your phone number. The area code can start with a zero or one, those being reserved for long distance and operator calling. Also, some area codes are reserved, leaving less than 800 possible combinations for use. 
it is estimated that we would run out of available NPAs by 2032. The next three digits are called the exchange code. The exchange codes are based on the names of the central offices. Originally, central offices had names like General, Davenport, Pennsylvania, etc. The first two letters of the central office name, as represented by the telephone dial, are the first two digits of the exchange code. The last letter represents the operator panel number. So central offices had more than one switch for panels, so different people were connected to different operator panels. The last four digits is called the subscriber number, assigned to a line that is connected to a customer's equipment. In the early days, local calls didn't require the mentioning of the area code. People only mentioned the exchange code and the subscriber number in order to save time. But that's still seven numbers. You know, before the ability to save contacts in your phone, people had to memorize the seven digit number. So exchange names was used as a mnemonic. For example, 736-5000 would be referred as Pennsylvania 65000. Exchange names were widely in use in the early days. Yes, hello. Who would you like to connect the line to? Hello? 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 Human operators were eventually replaced by machines. What came with it was a rotary dial. You know, the mechanism where you insert your finger in the dial hole and rotate. Every time you dialed a number, the telephone would interrupt the circuit and send that many pulses. Dialing number one would generate one pulse and the machines back at the central office would know that you dialed number one. Number two generates two pulses per second. Rotary dials were eventually replaced by the push button telephones, what we have right now. It is also referred to as touch tone keypads. Pressing each button generates two distinct audible tones. Here is a chart. From the chart you can see that pressing each key generates a unique pair of tones that consist of one low frequency tone which can have a frequency of 697, 770, 852 or 941 hertz and one high frequency tone which can have a frequency of 1209, 1336 or 1447 hertz. Keep in mind that these are electrical signals which are then sent to the central office. The central office has a decoder which converts the voltages into zeros and ones. It determines which number is dialed by identifying the two frequencies. So for example, if I dialed number 1, my telephone would send waves of 697 and 1209 Hz to the central office. The decoder at the central office would convert the two tones into zeros and ones and would know that the waves have a frequency of 697 and 1209 Hz. Out of all the possible buttons, the decoder would only keep the buttons that generate a 697Hz tone. Then it would look at which of the three options also generate a 1209Hz tone. Since dialing number 1 generates both 697Hz and 1209Hz, the telephone exchange would know that you dialed number 1. So there you go, 
now you know how telephone numbers work um, I don't know what you'll do with the information but yeah yeah that's how telephone works peace bye